the whole truck and trailer rolled over. That's not good. So we are in Chamalt, Oregon, where it is currently 11 degrees and snowing. A little bit of a different type of job today. We actually got called by a lady who got sent up into this area for work for a few days, and then uh, this happened. And she needs to get back down to California. She doesn't have a car that's prepped for the snow, doesn't have snow chains, has never driven in the snow, doesn't want to drive in the snow. So she called and asked if we could tow her and her car from here down south till we get past all the storms and snow where she feels safe to continue on her own. It's a little bit of a different job, but that's what we're gonna do today. So we just got fuel here, got snacks here, and now we're gonna head over here to pick up our customer. And now before anybody says anything about damn Californians and not knowing how to drive in the snow and all that other nonsense, I'm from California. And as far as not knowing how to drive in the snow, if you don't live where there's snow, why would you know how to drive in the snow? So in a case like this where the person is inexperienced in the snow and doesn't have a vehicle equipped for these conditions, I would much rather see them err on the side of caution and have their vehicle towed to where they feel safe to drive than try to risk it going down a highway like this. Even if it wasn't me, they were having to tow them through here. Uh, this is a very dangerous stretch of highway with a lot of really bad accidents every year. Not a place to risk it. So like I said, it snowed just a little bit here. This is our car here, it's a Toyota RAV4, it's a front wheel drive only, does not have snow tires, not equipped for this conditions, but like I said, why would it be? This isn't where she lives. So it was actually stuck right where it was sitting in front wheel drive, it wouldn't even move out of there, so I'm hooking onto it from the back, gonna pull it out here, then go around to the front, hook on so we can tow it. All right, we got it loaded up, got our tow lights on the back, it's a front wheel drive, so we don't need the dollies. Got our wheel straps. Got all our safety chains on down here, and we are ready to roll. We are here in Dunsmuir, California now, where it's still like 20 something degrees. You can see the tires are, are steaming. I'm uh, gonna get some windshield washer fluid because I used a bunch of it. Check over everything and keep on going. All right, we are down here just between uh, Redding and Lake Shasta. There's a little bit of snow and ice up by Shasta, so we came down to the bottom here and uh, gonna get unloaded so she can get headed home. And done. Alright, we are headed home back across Lake Shasta Bridge. It is just empty still. It's terrible. It's crazy. So we got unloaded, we got up here back to this overlook over Lake Shasta, stop and enjoy the not so beautiful anymore view and uh, look at how dirty my truck is too, I guess. But that was a 281 mile tow and it took seven hours with all the snow and ice we went through and uh, this part here going over Shasta there's just a little bit of snow and ice she probably would have been fine but like she said she's already paid that much to get down here she might as well have me take her just a little bit farther to make sure I'm through all of it so uh, yeah as a long tow was it 100% necessary no was it the safer option for her by far she has zero experience driving the snow she got sent up there uh, by work kind of on a last minute trip was not expecting the big snowstorm we got was not prepared for it didn't have a car prepared for it had no experience in it so safer call for sure um, I said kind of a an oddball one for me but I'm glad I was able to help out and she's happy I'm happy and we're gonna head towards home also it was 11 degrees when we started our day it is 44 degrees now and I think I'm gonna die a heat stroke
All right, we stopped at the pilot truck stop to get some pizza, some cream soda, some Cinnabons, and some water. Now we are good for the trip home. And we are officially back in Oregon. I was gonna say something else there, but I totally blanked on what it was. So awkward silence is what you get, but we're back. I told you it was slick. That's the second one we've seen in the ditch, just on the way back. Plus on the way down, we saw five cars in the ditch on either side. Uh, two of them rolled over and then two big rigs rolled over. Uh, the big rigs might still be there on the way back, we'll see, but I bet most of the cars are pulled out by now. There's another one in the ditch. There it goes Consolidated. They're the big dogs up in Bend. Uh, very good company to work with. That's number four in the ditch. Now let me clarify that normally I would love to stop and help out, but in conditions like this, where you got no room to get off the road on either side other than just stop in the lane, we got a pile of traffic behind me, a whole bunch of trucks going. All I'm gonna do by stopping is creating a bigger hazard. Those last two vehicles that we went by, the people were out shoveling snow, they are totally fine. Uh, DOT has their incident response trucks out like crazy patrolling up and down this road. Uh, state police have a bunch of their cars out patrolling up and down this road. Someone will be by to help them very soon. And those state police and incident response trucks are in contact with the tow companies that are contracted to work this area. That's their deal to handle them. They can handle the traffic control, the recoveries, all that. Not my place to pull over and try to do something when all I'm going to do is create a bigger hazard. So we keep on going. There's number five in the ditch. Again, they're fine. No major deal on the phone. DOT will be along soon. So here's one of the semis we saw on the way up. It's still here. That one's already flagged and tagged by the DOT. They know about it, it's reported. That'll be a scheduled recovery where they will wait for better conditions and then come in and set up traffic control and do the recovery at that point. Uh, up here in Oregon on roads like this, in situations like that, and a lot of these cars that we pass by as well, if it's off the road and not posing a danger to the road, they're gonna get the people out and they're gonna leave the vehicle there until some point later on when conditions are improved and are safer to get it out. It's not like a lot of other states where when a wreck happens, tow trucks come in and shut whatever down and do whatever they need and clean it up right then. It's scheduled recoveries that will wait for improved conditions, proper traffic control, and a safer time to do it. So a lot of these cars you see are going to sit here for a while. I'm betting a not so happy camper today. Look at this dude. He's out there passing cars in a no passing zone in these conditions. Idiots. There's a part of something that fell off a truck. Looks like apple crates. Well, we came to a stop in a hurry. Uh, luckily, the guy behind me came to a stop in a hurry too, because right ahead of this guy, there's another truck in the lane, but he is facing us. And I don't know what's going on. It is, oh, it's a tow truck. See, this is, there's someone who's pulling out of the bank. See, this is stupid. So stupid. That tow truck is sitting around a blind turn. We all come around the corner on the ice with no warning, no flashing lights, no traffic control. Come around the corner on the ice and there's a tow truck sitting in our lane facing us. That guy should not be out here pulling cars out of the bank like that. Stupid. 
Okay, so that was exactly what I was talking about earlier, saying I don't need to be pulling over on the edge of the road here, still being in the road and trying to pull someone out without traffic control or advance warning or DOT here helping out. Um, we came around a blind turn in the dark on the ice and all of a sudden there's a truck in our lane facing our direction. And uh, that big rig ahead of me, he hit the brakes and his trailer started to get sideways. Luckily he got off and got it straightened back out. I got slowed down and stopped in time, just a little wiggle back and forth, just starting to slip. And luckily the big rig that's behind me saw what was going on and got stopped without any problems. But that is exactly what I was saying, where when you try pulling off here and winching someone out without DOT and traffic control there, all you're doing is creating a bigger hazard that is likely to cause a bigger wreck. Here in Oregon, there's a process for how that's supposed to be handled. DOT incident response is supposed to be there or state police, some sort of traffic control then you can go pull someone out of a ditch like that. That is why all these cars are just sitting in the ditch. Oregon does not want you just pulling up all by yourself trying to be Captain Hero here. Finally back home and parked. Let's look at some stats for this trip. We've got a total of 555.7 miles, an average mile per gallon of 20.5, and yes, that's accurate, an average mile per hour of 42, and a total time of 13 hours and 11 minutes since we left this same spot this morning. So finally home and time to relax. Uh, that trip went pretty good other than uh, the part where I almost got in a wreck because that tow truck was sitting in the road like an idiot. But aside from that, everything went good. Uh, only took one and a half monsters, two slices of pizza, and uh, one whole row of Cinnabons. But good trip overall. Uh, I think that lady made the right call with her zero snow experience, the big storm we had, and uh, the vehicle she was in. Like We saw seven car wrecks on the way down, plus two flipped over semis. Two of those cars were also flipped over, and then six car wrecks on the way back. So uh, definitely some slick road conditions out there. So I said, lady made the right call. She was happy. Everything went good for me, so good deal all the way around. Uh, don't forget the merchandise store is still going and uh, all proceeds are still going to our friends who lost their house in the house fire so all the support is very much appreciated. I think I am going to eat another row of Cinnabons for dinner and then uh, call this a night. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.